Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I want to show you this. Yeah, this is the Electron Digitone. It's a really cool synthesizer. It's digital and it's got tone. <laughs> and it's got four tracks. Each of them can be sequenced. And if you press this little button, you go into MIDI mode and then you've got four tracks of MIDI that you can sequence sequence external gear and send it out here in the MIDI output. It's a really nice little machine. It's using this uh, synthesis method called uh, 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 FM synthesis. FM means frequency modulation. One little waveform is modulating another little waveform and together new harmonics appear magically. It's a really cool sound uh, but if you spend precision and time learning uh, FM synthesis, then you can actually make some really precise, uh, nice sound, and not just like alien and crazy sounds, which I totally appreciate as well. Uh, but you can also make like a really solid bass or a, a really sharp, snappy overtone or a really uh, cool pad. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do today in this video is to show you how it works. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to do. So let's do it. Yeah, Zoom is working. Yeah, we've got visuals. So here we go. Hello, I'm a Digitone. Clearly you're an iPad, but the reason why I'm showing you this is to, to show you the memory structure of the Digitone. And in many cases, the, the Digitact as well, they're very similar. And uh, so if, if you're a beginner, uh, this will give you an insight to how it works. So every Digitone has something called a plus drive. The plus drive is basically a storage. Uh, it's not like a spinning hard drive. It's some sort of flash storage, I guess. And uh, it's got space to save something called projects. When you're on the, the Digitone, you're always in a project. There is always an active project. And there is space to save 128 different projects. You can only work at one at a time. And a project contains almost everything. It's like the, the music, the sounds, the, you know, everything uh, that you've been working with is stored there, except the sound library. Although every project is self-contained, there is like a global sound library of 2048 sound memory slots. So that's a lot of room for creative patches. Sounds are copied into the patterns. They're not linked. So if you change a sound in the sound library, that change will not be reflected in, in any of the patterns you might have made with that sound because they're just hard copies, the copies, yeah. The sound library is organized into eight banks labeled A through H, like A, B, C, D, F, yeah. And uh, there are 256 sound slots in each bank. Cool. And I believe bank A and B, like the two first banks, are full with, uh, with uh, stock presets or patches coming out of uh, Electron. And they're actually really, really good. Cool. In the project, back to the project now, in the project there are eight banks. And I mentioned banks here in the sound library, and banks here, there are eight banks here as well. It's not the same banks, but they're labeled the same and they, uh, it, it works very similar. So eight banks, A through H, and uh, what are banks? Well, a bank contains 16 patterns. Now, 8 times 16 is 128. So every project contains, uh, contains 128 patterns. That's a lot of room for uh, making music. A pattern can be up to 64 trigs long loops. Loops of music with steps sequenced into it. Now each pattern has got like two lanes. Uh, one side is the four synth tracks. This is where you create all all the music uh, internally on the Digitone. Uh, and all the sound settings per track are stored there. And uh, the BPM is set, stored in the pattern somewhere as well. Um, yeah. 
And then there are four MIDI tracks as well for sequencing uh, stuff that is outside of the digitone, like a drum uh, sample player or, uh, I don't know, like a, um, a Korg Volka FM or something. <laughs> Anything with taking MIDI. Cool, yeah, let's keep going. Now, the project also contains a sound pool. Now, what is that? Sound pool rhymes with cool. And it's cool but because any of the 128 sounds stored here can be hot swapped per trig in the sequencer. This is perfect when programming drums and great when pushing the sequencer to its limits. That means you can prepare a list of of sounds that you particularly like to uh, in the sound pool and then in the sequencer you can go from one patch to another with just a very simple uh, maneuver I'm going to show you later it's actually not difficult at all it's really cool like a drum kit for instance very cool to program drums on one track and then you just switch between patches per step cool and the project also contains like the necessary settings. Uh, is it all the settings? I th yeah, I think maybe all of the settings. Mm, yeah, uh, like MIDI channel settings, uh, MIDI sync settings, like whether it's going to receive uh, transport uh, data or listen to CC messages and stuff like that. All that is, is also stored in the project. And so that means uh, that if you uh, have one project for a specific setup or a specific band where you're syncing this to in a slave mode to some other device and then you've got another project where you you're using it as a master and maybe sending clock to something else all these settings are just stored in the project and will be loaded like that very good now if you're a seasoned uh, Electron user, you might be wondering, where are the kits? What is kits? If you're a new uh, user, you don't have to worry about it, but it could be good to know that the Digitone and the Analog series are different. Uh, in the Digitone, a pattern contains all of the sounds. It's self-contained. Don't worry, it'll just work. In the Analog series, the sounds associated to pattern is called a kit and has to be stored separately. Changing a kit on the analog series will be reflected on all tracks where that kit is being used. Not so in the Digitone and the Digitact. So the kits are essentially a part of every pattern and will be stored in the pattern and you never have to even see it. So every time you load in that pattern, it's just going to sound right. Yeah. So that concludes my overview of the, the memory structure. Uh, and uh, yeah, you got it, right? Yeah? Yeah, let's go. Let's uh, move over to the synth. <coughs> Hello, I'm Digitone, for real this time. <laughs> so enough with that boring stuff of memories and stuff, but it's important to keep in the back of your head. So uh, do that, please. So how do we turn it on? Power. Dish. I like that they keep the, the labels up here because uh, it's very clear what's behind this without having to lean over uh, the edge. So, what does it sound like? There you go, this is a sine wave. It's the most common building block when making uh, uh, FM synthesis. It's pictured here. You can actually turn this straight away to the left to cycle some through some different harmonics uh, what? I think it's wave folding or something okay anyway what I'm gonna do first is to try some sounds and see what it sounds like there are four tracks here uh, I'm gonna double tap one of the tracks to get into this quick load uh, music sound browser <laughs> I'm using the arrows here. Uh, 
And if if you think that some of the uh, the titles or the names of the patches are a bit strange, it's because most many times, like this one, it's actually in Swedish. Grumlig. It means that something is not really clear. It's textured or uh, difficult to see through. Grumlig. Yeah. Great patch name. Great patch name. Okay. <coughs> Another way to browse here, you can see it's a long list here we're going through, is to, to turn this. You can do it a little faster. And if you keep it pressed, it's even faster. You can see this little uh, bar there, right? Cool, yeah. Uh, another way to browse is to use the side menu. These menus sometimes have side menus if there is like a, a little arrow on the side. Press left if there is a left arrow to access the viewing um, kind of option uh, side menu. If there is something on the right, it's mostly an action menu. So left, we've got view pool, sort, filter, search. We can search by name actually, but we can also use the filter. So uh, pressing yes there to go into this we could for instance listen to just things that is tagged as pads yes exit like that and now this is a collection of sounds Yeah, really nice. Cool, yeah. A way to stop uh, ringing notes or delay and reverb from, from ringing too long, if you just want to clear it out, is to double tap the stop button. Like that, to come to a complete halt. Very useful when, uh, when you want to do that. Um, okay, so um, how do we do this? Yeah, let's start by uh, making a little track. Let's... Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna stop that filter again, uh, clear it, and uh, I'm gonna find a bass. Filter, mm, uh, bass, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, how about this one? That is a nice bass. Let's load it in. By pressing yes, you accept to load this into the track that is highlighted. So, track one, bass, yes. bass that is a nice sound okay I'm going to just lay it out on the sequencer somehow how to do that well this is the sequencer it's also the keyboard and it's also the banks so it's kind of a multifunctional area here right now you can see that they're lit up in a, a keyboard layout yeah uh, but as soon as we press this button that means recording Red means recording. We can start putting out notes on the grid. Yeah? We can take them away like that. You can press several at once. It's very nifty. Yeah? And um, so let's make a little bass line. Right now, we can see this little playhead playing. It's a loop, and we can see this flashing. It means it's on page one out of four possible pages. This only has one page for now. And, yeah. Okay, so I, I exit this grid mode to, to try, uh, try the sound again. How about recording it live? Uh, that could be nice, yeah. By pressing... Rec and play. We enter this mode when uh, the recording is flashing and this is green. This means it's going to record everything I do now. But there is no metronome. Let's turn on a metronome. 
pressing stop. Function and metronome. Dish. We have a metronome here that we can activate like so. Whenever there are uh, four options like this on screen or eight options, the position of them on the screen corresponds to the position of these knobs. So pay that pay attention to that. Sometimes it's not entirely clear uh, which one is which, then you have to read uh, the label. Like on this page, for instance, it's not four options and, and it could be a little bit unclear. This BPM knob is the level, for instance, and swing is, is E. Uh, so just just have to, to learn how to do it. Okay, where were we? Metronome. We c there's a quick way to turn it on. Press function and hold. The metronome is on. Now check this out. We can practice a little bit first. Three, four. Something like that. I realize that this is a much longer sequence than just uh, uh, the one page here. So how about increasing it to four pages to make a really long bass loop? Uh, well, Press function and page doosh, to enter this mode where you can set the length of the of the pattern. You can see that these are all lit up. I can actually set a, a really odd length, like 15 trigs long, for instance. Or I can press page to enter a second page. You can see both of them are light, lighting up now. And and yeah, set the length, the total length of this uh, pattern. I'm going to keep pressing it till all of them are lit and that means we have a full, full uh, 64 trick long sequence. I'm happy with that. I'm going to press no to exit this menu. And now we can see that these are kind of half lit. When playing, we can see that the one we're on is flashing, indicating which page we're currently on, right? Cool. Um, so when pressing rec and play, it, it immediately started playing, but if we go into the metronome page again, function and metronome, we see there is a, an option to do a pre-roll. How about a one bar pre-roll? Yes. So now it's playing. If I press rec and play, two, three, four, and then it starts running. Okay, I'm just gonna freestyle and make a little bass loop. Wish me luck. Rec can play. One, two, three, and. Okay. We can hear that my timing was really quite sloppy, to be honest. Uh, we can fix that. There is an option to quantize uh, a, a sequence or um, a, a track. So how do we do that? We press this little button. This is probably the pattern settings, I'd say. Yeah, um, and at the top here in this menu, quantize is the first option. Yes, they figured that quantize is probably going to be your first option because you're a sloppy musician. <laughs> and they were right, I am. So um, we can see here, if I want to quantize track one or everything, uh, I have two options here. So just track one for this time. I'm full quantize now. Yeah, nice and quantized and very, very tight. I can do it gradually though. If I wanted to keep some of that sloppiness, I could. I could also, I'm gonna turn off the quantize now and go back out here. I could also, if I turn this on again, I could see where all the trigs ended up here. Pa pressing page is gonna um, step through the different pages. If I press and hold and press right or left, we see the micro timing. Um, we can see this was a tad early. This was way late. This was way late. And we can see that the, the timing here was all over the place. This was right on the beat. I could actually adjust it manually like this. 
if I want to. Or I could use that um, quantize feature. Dish full quantize. Okay, let's keep it quantized for now. I'm going to turn off the metronome for now. Dish, we're off. That's not too bad. That's nice. Um, so, let's go to track two. What do we want to this sound? Uh, I'm making a little uh, music piece here. So, let's, let's see. I'm going to go to the left again in this browsing menu and turn off the filter. Clear. And let's see. Ah. That is a nice simple lead. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to keep that. Nice. That's a nice sound. Uh okay. something like that okay I'm gonna turn the metronome back on I'm gonna live record it again um, rec and play one two three and yeah that's that's nice yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm going to go into this menu again and quantize this track as well. Let's take a look at that nose again. Um, bum, bum, dun, 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 dun. I want to change that note to... I want to make it that. So I'm going to change the notes here. How do you do that? Well, keep it pressed. Press up and down access a little uh, uh, keyboard here. I want to change this from a G to an F. And I actually, I want to move this note here to make it straight. Press it, copy, press the destination and paste, and uh, take away this one. Yeah. It's like it is straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. So I want to I want to put a kick drum into this little song. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep the drums on track four. Why not make that a habit so that I can easily navigate many of my tracks and make it sort of a a rule of thumb. Track four, kick drum. Okay, press left, filter kick just gonna show kicks and let's see Ooh. how about this one yeah let's use it yes it's now loading in here and I can start putting it out now we've got four pages here I'm gonna show you some tricks how to uh, copy between pages so this is like a basic kick uh, on each uh, very very straight here and since we're we have four pages uh, well I could do this you know but it, if it was a more co complex thing we could copy so on one page press press page and copy shift page press page and paste new page paste so now we copy that same rhythm to all of the all of the pages <laughs> Maybe a bit loud, so I'm going to lower the volume on that track. How about this? A bit low? No one? I'm going to check out the, the reverb on this one by pressing AMP twice. There's a lot of reverb send there. Perhaps we can make something with a reverb to make it longer. Function and reverb. And we can see the reverb page. We can see that the, the decay of the reverb is sort of half long. Let's make it even longer. OK, 
like a like a really epic reverb there and um, maybe some delay we can go into the delay engine as well see how that looks there's one thing called X here on the delay turn it to right to make a stereo ping pong delay but you also have to turn up the the width So it's bouncing between right and left channel, and you also you can also use uh, reverb on the delay. So send some reverb from the delay to make it even wetter. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. What I'm gonna do is to take you know reset the delay from from track two. So there's no delay now, and then I'm only going to put delay on certain notes. So, dun 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 dun, on the last one, for instance, lots of delay there. I'm creating a local um, parameter lock on this. A bit too much. Take it down a bit. Perhaps on this one as well to make some. Uh, if I if I want it, uh, if I regret that and I don't want any parameter locks, that I can press the encoder like that to reset it, and then move forward a bit on the last one there. Another reverb uh, delay. Sorry. <laughs> nice okay um, what about this track uh, let's see if we could find a sound that that we want there perhaps a chord and how about that yeah how about that let's live record that nice how about this sound I'm just gonna try to mix it a bit different uh, go into the filter number two to cut some of the bass making like a little uh, uh, stereo trick for this sound yeah I'm going to the amp and going into the rec mode again and telling one to be on the left side and one to be on the, on the right side and uh, that could be nice so the first one bleh, this one I would like pan it to the left almost all the way the next one, I'll pan it to the right, almost all the way. A bit too much. A bit too much. Thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about that? Well. That's nice. Um, uh, I was speaking about uh, how to make the drums on one track and make like a little kit and change the drums on every every trig. And uh, let's do that. Let's find more drums that we like, and uh, we can do it by you know 
now up until now we've just loaded stuff straight into the track but now we're going to load stuff into the the sound pool and we do that by pressing this we go into this menu and we go down to sounds sound manager and in this mode we could probably do like this we could um filter and uh percussion let's see yeah that's cool yes i want that and in the sound manager when you press yes you don't load it you actually just hook it like that mark it for future uh, uh treatment yeah lots of kicks here kick 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 yeah snare cool yeah so i'm just picking out stuff that sounds cool basically as you can hear these are are heavily you know it sound like fm synthesis it's because it is so they have this particular sound when you're creating um percussive sounds with fm synthesis yeah how about these so you, can, you notice now there is a, a an arrow to the right because this is the full featured sound manager press right to, to access the action menu and take action copy to yes sound pool yes 12 sounds copied and then if we go to the left again we could view this pool and we can see I, I was actually filling it up earlier today but the ones that we just copied they're down here so the last 12 cool so how do we um, put them onto the timeline well enter this mode again to be able to program stuff and instead of just pressing you can press and hold and uh, move this so we can uh, try out different stuff snare oh, I was on the wrong page page one okay and how about this yeah I'm gonna copy that put it there and there <laughs> or just there I'm gonna put a little dum -pa -dum -ta. and then put it there as well. So I'm copying and pasting tricks like that. Press it, copy, press, paste. Yeah. And move this to how about this? I don't know. And uh, <laughs> I'm just guessing here. I think randomness is fun. Uh, that was a bit harsh. This was cool. A little uh, click. I'm going to put it here as well. Cool. I'm going to copy this page and put it on all the pages now. I think one thing that stands out here is that dong, the, the cowbell. So I'm going to change that. Let's see. And this one, I think. So I'm going to change it to something else here, like something um, plat. What's that? Okay. And also bring the volume down like that. Amp. Yeah. So now I have this one on page one here. I removed that kind of cowbell thing. But on page two, it's there. On page three, I'm going to copy page one, copy, move to page three, paste it there to, to have a copy of that first page. So now I've got two variations here. On the 
last page I'm gonna paste again I'm gonna make a third variation I'm gonna have something here that um, let's see like um, hip snare could that be cool I'm gonna copy that for some Three and now we're here. So perhaps put it there. And something maybe I could put that uh, clong down and put it there instead in the end. Now this is becoming a bit um, uh, like it looks like I'm doing it in blind blindfold because I. I can't see the sound really. I can't hear it, but um, uh, yeah, you got to keep stuff in your head. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Mhm. Mm Not too shabby. Bass, I'm gonna bring it down a bit. Perhaps create some space like dum ba dum 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 ba dum 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 dum. Perhaps not trigger those. I'm gonna copy both of those, take them away. Dum 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 ba. Okay, make make room for some feelings there, and then back here, do but don't 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 create a little different don't don't. Don't 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 don't. Move this here. Don't don't don't. Move this one here. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do something now. I'm going to press function and save pattern to save it to the temp area. Uh, and that means that it is now stored safely as a returning point. So if I'm um changing the sounds of everything in one go which i think is really fun to do uh it's the feature called control all if i do that now um we're going to return destroy it and then we have a safe returning point because we just saved it so uh let's do that by pressing midi and holding it any parameter that i change will uh effectively be changed on all the tracks so let's try that pressing midi will turn it into midi mode but if you keep and hold it and wiggle then you're controlling all the tracks let's try it so an idea could be to to change the filter for instance um the filter is different on every track uh, but it's gonna change the the filter um the amount of change will be the same uh, the relative relative change will be the same on every track so let's try now holding this down bringing another frequency envelope Crazy synth one, one, two, three, and return. 
So pressing function and load reload pattern will return uh, to the, the state where you saved it, which is very, very useful in a jam situation. And by the way, we haven't even talked about the patterns. Um, you can see up here in the left corner, A1, untitled. A1 is the, the position in the, the pattern slot that is being used. Untitled is the name. So let's give it a name. Press this, the pattern one, go down and rename it. Press function and no and uh, enter a little name here. Uh, call it um, um, Pat. Pat one. It's it's my uh, name for this. Yes. So now we've got a, a pattern and we named it. If we press the pattern button here, it says Bank A select pin. So Bank A is the current uh, the current one the current bank that we're currently in. If we press another one, it says a2, A3, A14, and these are all empty, there's nothing there. But we can see that this one is lighting up, that means there is something there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can copy this. Now, there are many things you can copy. Uh, you can copy the page as we did earlier, you can copy a, a trig, uh, you can also copy a track and a, a pattern. If this one is lit and you copy, it means you're copying a track. If you're holding down this and copy, you're copying that sound that is on that track. If you're on the filter page and press filter and copy, you're copying that page. If you're on this page and copy, you're copying that page and so forth. You can copy a lot of stuff, but it's only the last thing you copied will be kept in memory, like on any normal computer. So if, if we want to copy the whole pattern, this has to be off. And then you're copying the pattern. Yeah. If we want to paste that into another slot, there are two ways actually we can do that. One easy way is pattern, go to another pattern, press function and paste, and it's there. Now, if I press it again straight afterwards, it, it, it undoes that page, paste. I'm going to go back here again. What if I want to copy something while you're playing? You can do that. You can copy something into the future. So now, you can copy this, copy pattern, press pattern, destination and paste, and hold it. And it was counting down, and now it's there. I could go there, and then we created created a copy, like a variation. We can start fiddling around with. Perhaps we can make a, a different expression here, like. We could turn on the arpeggiator by uh, pressing function and arp. This one is lighting up. Oh, it doesn't seem to work, and let's fiddle around with the settings here. Let's see, speed. That's, that's nice. Red complete. And the bass could be different. So I'm making a variation now. Okay, let's listen to these two variations now. Pattern one. Two, three, four, one, two. And I changed to this one. It was actually queuing up. Let's change to one again. So it's blinking there, it's flashing, it's queuing. Nice. So now we've got two nice variations. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is how you how you progress and make sounds, uh, or I mean, make music. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the way, by the way, since we've messed around with patterns now, how about banks? Banks are, are these eight banks. So if I press this bank now, it waits for me to select a pattern. Bank A, one. Bank B, five. Bank C, uh, 11. Yeah, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can hold down pattern. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna build a little chain there. I will. It, it's a bit simplified. You keep the first one, and then you build uh, a little chain like that, and it will play these in the loop after each other. It's a very simple, uh, simple way. And if you press the pattern again, the the chain is gone. So, what next? What next? Yeah, yeah, sound design. Okay, pattern three, empty. So, the first time, uh, I mean, by now, you've you've been seeing me go through the sound engine to a, 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 a tiny degree, but let's uh, tackle it full on now. Now, Synth 1 is one of the most important pages. Synth 2 is another important page and Synth 2 has got two pages. I press it again, come to the sub page of Synth 2. Mm -hmm. Synth 1 is where you select the ratio which means the, the pitch, um, the relative pitch between the operators. So right now we only hear like a clear sine wave. Now on the left here you can see the the constellation, it's called the algorithm. I think it's a strange name, is it's sort of the routing of the sounds. Um, and in FM synthesis, it's called the algorithm. If you change this, uh, you're going to change the, the algorithm. There are eight of them to choose from. So in the first one, B goes into B, that goes into A, which can also be uh, feedbacked. Uh, which then goes into C. C is the carrier. The carrier is always the last one. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, can go to this one. We can see that these are not even connected between each other. It's like two lanes going straight out. So a two operator FM and a two operator FM. And this one, the, the, the B there in the back is the one that is feedbacked. So for this one is like A going through, being sent to all of them, yeah. And this is a mix, and this is a mix. So this this one is a bit interesting. It's like it going to each other. It's cool. And if you're gonna make an organ, perhaps this one would be the one. I'm not sure. Maybe, or maybe this one. So what, let's let's just take it easy now and uh, take it step by step. What we hear now is a clear sine wave, no FM synthesis going on. Let's, before we fiddle around with the, um, the ratios, let's go to scene page two. The level here is very important. It's the level of uh, how much FM synthesis is being applied, to what degree. So um, A is this one, B are those two. B is a bit special because it's two operators. So when you're raising the level of B, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think you're actually first raising this one and then gradually raising this one, or maybe they move a bit together. Uh, let's hear it. So I'm going to raise A to see what that sounds like. Yeah, you could hear that as like a typical FM sound to it. Now I'm going to do the same same thing with uh, B. You can hear that it's going through two kind of phases. That's phase one there. It's exactly the same in this one. But then... It's like a second phase, which is really interesting. And uh, so you can 
animate these you can automate them with uh, these parameters you can set the attack you can set the ending level and the decay and the level you want to apply FM slow attack fast attack yeah so how about mixing both A which is the later one in the chain with something going on in B as well and right now B is not even set to to the chain it's at level zero so we can't even hear what this effect has on anything let's make a this and now now you gotta keep stuff in mind here because B is earlier in the chain than A which comes later in the chain uh, and C being the one the last gate to uh, <laughs> to what you hear if this one has a quick attack if B has a quick attack and A has a slow attack like, like now chances are that you can't even hear the quick attack before the slow attack uh, later in the chain has come to to a level where B is audible so if we instead make A fast and B slow we could hear the swell of B coming later right because yeah octave down nice 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 uh, if both of them are fast they occur at the same time if we go to synth page 2 there is a delay there function a delay which can uh, make this happen a tad late which could be cool <laughs> it sounds a little plucky and 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 and, and. So, um, this is how it works. If we now change the, the algorithm, it would, al would also change how, how they affect each other and will result in a different sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's fiddle around with more of these parameters. So that was synth page 2 with, with the envelope and stuff. Synth page 1 has the ratio. Now, um, if we change the, the ratio of A to, to be a, a higher pitch, what happens? We increase uh, free, we, we, I don't know, we create harmonics and this typical flavor of FM. And usually, usually, if you go up in pitch, you also uh, go up in uh, harmonics. But there are, you know, if if you go from one to two to three to four, those are kind of safe zones. But if you go to anything in between there, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit dissonant. The half step is pretty, uh, you know, nice. And this is a bit dissonant. But it's very cool. So what happens if you go down? Well, let's try it. 
Mm. I think you it becomes a bit more beefy and meaty. I uh, yeah, I kind of like that to go down. Uh, if if the operator goes down before the carrier, that is something that I feel is a good practice when you're creating a bass sound. But then again, if you go up half a step, like to 1.25 or 1.5, that's also kind of bassy. And this is where precision comes in. If we now change the, the, the amount here, the level, has a dramatic effect on on the on the sound right yeah go up the pitch it's a bit harsh on the ears okay let's try b then so right now what we're hearing now is is uh, the b is also at ratio 1 So we can see that with one knob we are changing both of them. So we're snapping one step on, on the second one and then uh, step by step we're increasing the top one. Yeah, you get the hang of it. I think it's sounds really cool when these change over time so what if we could do that we'll automate this B uh, parameter to change over time uh, what would that sound like well let's go to the LFO and, and do just that LFO there are two LFOs one and two LFO has got two pages and on page one, you set the destination. So what do you want LFO one to control? LFO means low frequency oscillator. It's a low, uh, right now it's a triangle. It's creating this value over time that you can apply to parameters. For instance, we start touching the destination here. We want to change ratio B to this extent, depth. It's a bit fast. And maybe a bit much as well. It's very sensitive. So what, turn down the speed. Okay, let's check out the different waveforms here. We've got sine wave. So it's sending this value change now over time. Got um, a square. Yeah. And we've got saw. And exponential. And ramp up. And this random. Let's keep the random. Bring the speed down. cool let's go back here to the synth and see what the level does it's a bit crazy but I like it Here and change the the 
B value. So what else can we do to work with the sound? Well, we can try and change the harmonics. It's a bit late now in the process to to when everything is so kind of tightly depending on each other. If I change the harmonics of the sound waves now, it's yeah, I, I might have to adjust stuff to make it sound nice. But let's do it. If if we change the harmonics, we could do it to the left or to the right. If we do it to the left, uh, counterclockwise, we're changing uh, the harmonics of the carrier only. To sharper, yeah, if we do it to the right, we're changing A and B. I'm going to reset this to by holding down a uh, function and wiggling we can reset stuff I'm going to keep it that down um, okay I'm going to change the detune see what that does change the feedback it's also a bit late now too but it's cool feedback is placed on a right there in the middle so let's change it Ooh, that really brought something to life there nice that, that was actually nice all this time we have had the opportunity to mix between X and Y with this uh, button here. What it does is that uh, there is a submix from B in this case being available for uh, for uh, mixing, you know, bringing that signal out if you want to. And then there is the X, uh, which is the the full kind of in this case, in this uh, algorithm, it's the full result of all the um, FM synthesis. So we can gradually go over to just listening to the B side here. That's very crazy. Nice, nice. Okay. Perhaps that could be a cool automation. Let's go to LFO again and see what we can do with LFO 2. Let's um, find the mix here. Mix, there we go, yes. And apply some mix. It's a bit fast, maybe. I'm going to uh, bring the... Yeah, bring the speed down. And I only want to do it once. I want to go like damn and then back. Uh, so how do we do that? Go to LFO page two and there are different modes. Okay, so right now it's like uh, it's always moving, even when I'm not pressing any keys, it's it's moving. But if I set this mode to uh, to uh, trig, it's going to start at the same uh, point every time, so it's more predictable. But it's still moving and moving. So how about we go to another one? This one goes through one whole cycle and then stops. The next one goes through half a cycle and then stops. Yeah, that's what I want. So let's go to the other page again and bring down the speed. 
That is cool. Okay, I'm gonna see if the feedback is okay. And now I'm gonna fiddle around with it, but to make sure that I can return to the spot, I'm gonna copy the synth page so that I know that if I if I don't hit the right uh yeah the sweet spot I can always go back by pasting it again. <laughs> Nice. What do you say? Is it nicer with it hissing uh, feedback? Or is it nicer with... I like the hiss. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like this. Yeah, it's a bit uh, wacky, wacko crazy but yeah so how do you save it go into this menu here go into the sounds and sound manager we've been here before right we can browse the banks here bank uh, C uh, is my bank for uh, creating patches I put my patches here so let's find a, an empty spot there press the action menu to the right export to here yes and I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna call it Bianca. Yeah, this is Bianca. Yes. If you want to tag this, like, uh, so it gets easier to find stuff afterwards, go here to the right, edit tags, and we've got a list of all the tags. Um, so, <laughs> what would be suitable for this? And um, perhaps glitch and. Uh, noisy yeah maybe uh, okay yeah that's okay Dish. glitch and noise mm -hmm. let's um, uh, make a couple of sounds to see this is a bit like trial and error just trying out stuff now you've seen the process I'm gonna move ahead a bit quicker and create a bass so we start here, I'm going to turn down the operator A to half, and I'm going to go here and raise this, maybe. That's nice. This is going to be a bit higher. Maybe, maybe some feedback. just a tad of attack of that crazy stuff this is so mega drive <laughs> yeah. okay yeah cool so that that's a bass a bit quick a bit quick to quick and dirty Bring it down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the amp and reduce the, the release. I'm going to create a, a vibrato here, destination. Um, so where do we go? We go to uh, synth uh, pitch of all of them. Yeah, that's a bit crazy. Faster. I'm gonna go to page two there, and so I'm moving forward a bit fast now because I know this stuff. I'm gonna make make it start, and I'm gonna make it grow. This is far too much, but it's good to have a high depth 
while you're working to see that it's uh, moving the way you want and then turn it down again. I'm going to tame the attack a bit. Um, Cool, yeah, there's a bass. Uh, what else? Gonna make it um, an organ. So let's go here. This is clear now. Now we've been working with algorithm one. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Synth one, algorithm one. Um, let's check out the different ones. I think for an organ, uh, a typical organ doesn't have much um, FM actually, it has more like several sine waves simultaneously side by side so this this is one with many uh, m many um, sine waves side by side another one is this mm -hmm. and we've got a feedback there and some FM there so 8 could be an organ 3 could be an organ uh, yeah let's do 8 okay so an organ is a lot of times let's bring up the first of all got a very short release okay sin 2 bring up this we can hear that A is the one that's affecting making FM B not so much FM there so let's uh, change the, the ratio of B. Mm -hmm. And we could also use the harmonics here to kind of give it a bit more expression. <laughs> Nothing happens. Let's go to the left instead. Yeah, we can see here that this B is going straight out to Y. It's not even collected in the X one. So if we, we have to mix them in order to even hear that one. So we put it like an overtone. Like this. Okay, this is the this one. So, I'm going to try some FM and see how it sounds. I'm also going to try some feedback just to see how this reacts. Yeah, it's kind of organ. Yeah, it's not too bad. Let's fiddle around with the uh, uh, reverb as well. And also the, the uh, chorus. Yeah. And 
also I'd say that a lot of times uh, organs has this uh, little percussive attack. Ch -ch -ch. How do we do that? We could do it with the the feedback probably. So let's assign an LFO. Um, LFO one, for instance, and go to feedback, synth feedback. Oh, the wrong one. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna make the tempo of the. I'm gonna make it start like so, and only play once. And then maybe a whole cycle. And then I'm gonna go to page one again. And I'm gonna do this ramp down. Can make it even faster. How about make a, a vibrato as well? I'm going to use this one for that. Second one. Um, we're going to send it to synth pitch or. Yeah, I'm going to make it faster. And I'm going to make it independent speed. Go here again. Too much. I'm going to make it grow. I'm going to um, grow like that. And this is going to start every time. Oops. Maybe make it a bit faster. Let's check out the filter as well. As an organ, yes. Let's save it. Um, yeah, there. Orkan. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how you work it. This is how you work it. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? I think we haven't covered everything no we haven't i think the most important thing is the sound engine to to kind of become one with the sound engine and to actually practice with a different um different algorithms to see what they they what which strengths and, and possibilities each of them has um yeah i wrote a little note here to try and okay yeah one more thing I want to show you. Okay, let me connect uh, a keyboard. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, how about this? Nice, yeah. Okay, so I just connect this Arturia at Keystep, which is a, a really good keyboard for playing this. We can see immediately it starts responding to velocity. But it's kind of boring. It just changes the volume. Now, I like to do modulations. I like to make it follow the velocity in a more uh, musical way, a more natural way. So let's rig this sound to be... So channel 1 is playing on channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, 4. There is something called auto channel. An auto channel is by default uh, 10. So that's nice to know. 
So let's make this bass uh, respond naturally to uh, velocity. So first thing I want to do is to set the level. I want to start out at the lowest level. So let's see here, since um, it's a bit strong, this is what I consider being a heart attack. So I'm going to change, um, change this level here, go down a bit, and this level here, go down a bit, B. Maybe the filter is going to be go down as well. I'm going to use this filter. So how about giving here? Mm -hmm. So this is the starting point. Uh, nice attack, but it's a bit too nice. Like that. Okay, now we're going to go into the setup menu. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to turn off velocity to volume uh, because I'm going to create my own velocity, the rules. So now there is no velocity. I'm going to keep going down here till I reach velocity modification. Let's enter modulation. So we've got four parameters, four destinations, which we can uh, change depending on velocity. I want to go to, um, let's see, I want to send this to synth level A, for instance. Just a tad. I want to send it to filter. I'm going to reverse what we just did here. I'm going to send it to uh, filter resonance. No, filter uh, frequency. There we are. And maybe in the end here, I could also go down here to the amp volume. Raise the volume a bit, but not too much, not too much. Let's try synth level 2 as well and see if it does something. A, a great way to try stuff out is to, oh sorry, going there again, is to first set the, the amount, uh, the modulation amount, destination and uh, depth. Set the depth really high and then keep looking to hear an immediate change. <laughs> Yeah, harmonics. Yeah, how about that? You can do the same thing with um, mod with pitch band modulation wheel and uh, breath controller which is um, yeah it's not available here so modulation wheel if we do the same thing there you can see this yeah nothing going on no, no modulation ratio Ratio A. Yeah, it's crazy. You can you can make up the rules here. I really dig this space. This is where you can make it shine. However, the only thing you can access from the uh, from the sequencer is the the velocity mod. 
So the, if you want to change, uh, if you want to make an expression that you, you want to access from the sequencer, you can change velocity mode is the place. Because here in the velocity mode, you go to the trig, uh, it's right there, velocity. So per trig, you can, so let's, like this. Now we can change the velocity per step here. And now it, it's not that crazy, it's just like a, a little uh, intensity. But it is very effective for changing, uh, for making yeah, changes. So. Yeah, that's something I wanted to change to to show. Uh, another thing I want to show is how to control MIDI. Oh, I almost forgot we haven't even talked about MIDI. Well, uh, there is a MIDI button here. Doosh. Now it's a MIDI. Um, there is no MIDI device connected to play. Let's connect one. Um, how about this one? Beat squeezer. So this is going to have to go into the MIDI out then. On a MIDI track, we need to set it up before it can communicate with, with something like this. Also, we need to hear this. So how do, we, how do we actually hear what we're doing now? Output here. Let's just put it in here. See if we can get the sound back into the digitone. Cool. So now we should be able to hear it through the master. In left and right in in pan left pan right so whenever we play this now we will be able to hear it but right now there's nothing telling the digitone that it's actually gonna send any MIDI so what we want to do now is to go to track go to the different pages here we see page one is where we set the MIDI source or yeah, destination in this case so channel uh, channel if we wiggle this there's nothing ha happening we get a little uh, indication here what to do function press to enable this is the way you set up uh, a MIDI track function and press the encoder to make it available channel 1 Nice, we got a nice little drum there. I'm gonna bring down the volume a bit. How about playing this? Yeah. Just record this. One, two, three, and yeah. So now we're you know talking. How about going to one of the songs we we created and see what happens there? Pattern one. Nice. This is a nice piece. Let's go to the master of this one. Uh, because the master setting is per pattern. Bring in this and pan it, pan it. And also go to the, uh, it's a totally different uh, pattern now, so we need to set it up again. Function and press, channel one. Let's actually see if we can change the, 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 the programs there. Let's go to program, function and press. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm playing the MIDI keyboard through this to this. We go to and I'm selecting what sound I want to play through this. page here I can actually apply reverb on the incoming audio gonna blend in a little better or like that it's getting a bit lengthy isn't it i think this is about about it i hope i hope you find uh what i did here uh, kind of some of it at least explanatory and some of it maybe just uh giving a, an influence on on uh, on how how you want to explore this machine further i think it's a solid machine it's really cool um and uh yeah electron digitone it's nice <laughs> uh, if you if you enjoy these videos that I make please don't hesitate to hop over to my web store where you can purchase my packs and stuff I have a pack for the digitone already in my store actually if you want to purchase that it's 40 patches uh, some of which you've heard in this video and if you if you enjoy what I do on a broader level uh, you can come to my Patreon site and uh, support me over there. It's a good platform for supporting independent artists like myself and others. And uh, yeah, it works like you can sign up and opt in anytime you want and decide on an amount you want to donate every time I come out with such a video or, or a pack or stuff. And all my patrons get access to all of my packs. And uh, if, if, if you want to donate like two or three dollars but maybe you want to set a, a safe roof like not more than three times a month or four times a month or something i'm trying to post uh between three and four videos a month uh and of of content that is interesting yeah yeah this is it um thank you for watching and stay curious everyone and hit me up in the commenting field and yeah yeah peace out stay curious bye